It's a remarkable program. It was actually initiated not by the Park Service, uh, but by members of the community, uh, scout community. Uh, and it's large. It's probably, I, I suspect it's the biggest single volunteer run event or at least fueled event in the Fredericksburg region. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children, adults, scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, who turn out to uh, prepare the cemetery. Hundreds of scouts will deploy to to lay out more than 15,000 candles. You walk up the hill and uh, you look out over that vast expanse of the cemetery that you can't see from Lafayette Boulevard that's invisible to you. And just this endless sea of candles, one for each man buried in the cemetery and women. There are several, many women buried in the cemetery as well. Um, but it is a, a stunning thing when when uh, every 30 minutes uh, we have a bugler from the old guard who plays taps. Uh, and you never know where in the cemetery he's going to be. He moves around from time to time. And uh, it's just kind of a remar- remarkable thing how... At that moment, while you know you can always hear this low buzz of conversations and people shuffling, and you can see people moving, when tap starts, everything stops, and it's as quiet as can be. If you compile a list of the five things in Fredericksburg you must do, uh, either as a visitor or a resident, uh, resident, the uh, illumination of the National Cemetery would be on that list and pretty darn high, I think. 15,300 burials in the cemetery, uh, more than 80% of them are unknown. Uh, but of the 2,700 or so that are known, uh, I mean, there are just some shattering stories uh, among them. Uh, but you think about that, and at least those families had some idea of what happened to their loved one. Uh, this cemetery has a higher percentage of unknown than probably any national cemetery in America. Uh, and that's a, that is a function of the chaos, of the remoteness uh, that attended the events, the four battles around here, the struggle of the region in the post-war period, immediate post-war period. Uh, it was... it it. That in itself tells a story, but as much as we understand and sympathize for the pain of those whose loved ones are known to be buried in that cemetery, uh, there's a different kind of pain for the majority of families who n- whose loved ones lie there and they never knew and still don't know. I mean, we have almost every single day people coming into the park looking for an ancestor. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the vast, vast majority, if they're a union ancestor um, and they, they're looking for their burial location, if they died here and the burial location is not known, it's probable that they're among the, the more than 12,000 unknowns buried in the National Cemetery. We had a grave uh, during Hurricane Isabel. You'll recall back in two, 2003, a, a tree went over in the National Cemetery and disrupted a grave. And um, we discovered the archaeologists who kind of looked at it recovered what was what was t- 
torn out of the grave, discovered that the, the burial was much more systematically and carefully done than what we might have thought. Uh, the, you know, the soldier still had his boots on uh, and uh, was laid very carefully. So that was the first time we had really any insight into, into you know, kind of how this work was done. And it, it seems, at least based on that, that it, it was done quite carefully.